How do you make something like this into this? Turning primitive types into domain objects. Modeling your domain is no easy task and it's absolutely no easier if you are only using primitive types. So for example, we have this simple user. It has public setters. The username is a string, so it can basically be set to anything. It doesn't care. This is not a great way to capture business rules. So let's say you have a few business rules regarding this username that it must be less than or equal to 100 characters and it cannot be null, obviously. If you have something like this, sometimes I see developers just slap a required on top of it. It's all good, they think, because then they convey the message to that. Okay, this username is required. You have to instantiate that property, right? But what you can do is basically just say simple user and we all good, we don't care. So using these attributes is absolutely no uh, good way of capturing domain knowledge. And the same goes for if you would have max length slapped onto this one. So yeah, you do convey some message, but it's not really like the compiler doesn't, doesn't care. And other programmers might not see these attributes, so they don't, they, they wouldn't care either. One way of making this class better is obviously to give it a constructor and do the, the checks here. So you would, let me just type this out. Right. So this way is absolutely making the simple user class way better because when you look over here in the in the test, you can see that okay, it will no longer compile. You will actually need to provide some kind of uh, some kind of value. Sure, you can provide an empty an empty string and it would compile, but at runtime it will fail. So that's much much better. The upside of this is that it's way it's super easy to use uh, EF core with this class, and especially if you do something like. Um, if you do something like this, give it a private constructor and this is make, make EF core happy, right? But, but again, this is no good way of modeling your domain. So a better way would be if we go into this user class instead, a better way would be to have a specific class called user name, for instance. And you also see here, here don't have the guard clauses anymore. I've actually moved them to this, to this, uh, specific user class. You see here, so everything is captured in this and, and this is a much better design, but it's also difficult to handle with EF core, for example. And also it makes um, accessing the actual username string a bit awkward. So what I mean by this is if we have, let me just create this one. Okay, so this syntax looks super weird, right? And especially if you want to go into the username, you have to do this. So that's that's again, not a nice way to model your domain. Uh, I've made one thing easier by using this implicit operator that will essentially do, uh, make it possible to just pass in a string. It will then get converted to the username type. You can see it has uh, this implicit conversion from string to username. So again, th th this looks nice, but the way you use the username is not very nice at the moment. So the third way you can model your domain and using proper encapsulation is basically this way. So you would again, just grab the username. And whenever you would have to use the username, you would um, just do this dot, you will dot into the value for the client. So they don't have to. So let me just uh, show you how that would look. That would look something like this. And there you have it. So that's a much cleaner way to do it. But you might already be thinking, how do you actually wire this thing up with EF core? And the same goes for this one, maybe because this is a you know complex type and complex types and EF core doesn't in the constructor doesn't really go that well together, but it's not that difficult actually. So what I've done here is basically just to say uh, the property and say, okay, so it's required, it has max length and when we want to store the username, we're just going to do this uh, username because that is actually uh, the class type username. And when we want to get it back from the database, we have a string and we will just instantiate a username in its place. So th this is one way of doing it. And for the, like the, the proper domain user, it looks slightly different um, because here we're using a private field and all this good stuff, but it's also equally difficult to use with the F core. 
the way I've done here is actually I've made a persistence class. So it's it's uh, it's mapping to this domain user so that it's now flat instead of having a nested object. It's, it's now completely flat and it will have an implicit operator that will just take this persistence class and return a domain user instead. So th this is how we do it at my work and it works beautifully. And when you configure the class, it's also incredibly easy because you no longer have to do these has conversions and, and all this crazy. You just basically um, map the properties that you would always do. That is it.